my recent series on the death of Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun in the Berlin bunker has generated a lot of interest in this subject, often seen by many, including many historians, as the end drama of the Third Reich. However, another equally fascinating drama was played out in parallel at the same time at Hitler's famous mountaintop village, the Obersalzberg, above the Bavarian town of Berchtesgaden. And it was a drama that initially directly involved Hitler in Berlin and many of his bunker staff, as many of his bunker staff were evacuated south out of the Doom capital. In another video, I have covered Operation Seraglio, the operation enacted by Hitler to fly staff and documents from the Führerbunker and Reich Chancellery south to Obersalzberg, that commenced on Hitler's last birthday, 20th of April 1945, and lasted for three critical days, involving ten plane loads of very important files and personnel going to southern Bavaria from Berlin, as the Red Army began to envelop the city. The operation, as originally envisaged, would also have seen Hitler, Eva Braun, Martin Bormann, and most of the other bunker staff evacuated as well, but after prevaricating for days, Hitler eventually announced that he would remain in Berlin to the end. However, half of his secretarial pool, many of his adjutants and their families and several senior aides were dispatched with various missions to the south. The Obersalzberg complex of buildings was centred on Hitler's luxurious mountain house, the Berghof, and also included houses belonging to Hermann Göring, Martin Bormann, Hitler's armaments minister Albert Speer, and several others. There were luxurious hotels and guest houses, a kindergarten, post office, and a huge garage complex, and a barracks for the SS Guard Battalion. Even when Hitler was away, his house and the village were extensively guarded, including his favourite tea house on the Muslanerkopf, and its more famous cousin, the Eagle's Nest, atop Kelstein Mountain. Below the buildings were miles and miles of tunnels and bunkers. In fact, sufficient space and infrastructure for an underground headquarters, should Hitler have decided to flee Berlin and fight on in the Alps. SS Obergruppenführer Julius Schaub, one of Hitler's longest-serving aides, received a special task from the Führer. Accompanied by one of the Reich Chancellery's drivers, SS Untersturmführer Heinrich Doser, Schaub arrived by plane at Einring Airport in Bavaria on the 21st of April 1945. Doser then drove Schaub to Hitler's apartment in Munich, where Schaub destroyed all the sensitive and personal material that he could find, before being driven to Obersalzberg later that week. The first really disturbing thing that occurred at Obersalzberg was the sudden arrest of Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring at his house near the Berghof on the 23rd of April. Göring had last seen Hitler on the 20th, on his last birthday, and had then closed up his large house, Karrenhall, north of Berlin, and travelled south, sending on three trains worth of art treasures and all of his personal possessions. Suspected of treason by Hitler following his offer to take over the reins of power from an obviously incapacitated and trapped Hitler in Berlin. The SS on the mountain were ordered by Martin Bormann from Berlin to arrest Reichsmarschall Göring and his family. In a confusing move on the same day, SS troops also surrounded the Berghof, where many of Hitler's evacuated bunker staff were residing, and placed the building in lockdown. Unaware of the Göring intrigue, many of Hitler's staff thought that Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler was staging a coup. Once Göring had been imprisoned in the bunkers beneath his home, normality returned to the mountain. But the idyllic Alpine situation was rudely shattered at 9.30am on the 23rd of April, when air raid sirens began to wail through the valley, and the staff and local civilians piled into the underground tunnel system. Overhead roared RAF Lancaster bombers in two waves. By the time Bomber Command had finished its work, the Obersalzberg had been transformed from an Alpine paradise by 1,232 tons of bombs into a complete ruin. 
Almost all the buildings, including the Berghof, had suffered direct hits or near misses. Bormann's house was totally flattened, while Göring's was half collapsed. The Berghof was struck twice, with most of the roof torn off, all the windows and doors gone, and the once elegant interiors wrecked. At 2.30 p.m. the all-clear was sounded, and people emerged from the bunker to a cratered moonscape. The RAF had bombed the site specifically to prevent Hitler from using it as a headquarters if he had chosen to escape from Berlin. However, in this they failed. Although they damaged or destroyed many of the buildings, the bunker system remained completely intact and functional. SS Gruppenführer Hermann Fegelein's heavily pregnant wife, Eva Braun's sister, moved into Eva's bunker beneath the bombed Berghof, while two of Hitler's evacuated secretaries from Berlin, Christa Schroeder and Johanna Wolf, used Hitler's bunker. Frau Fegelein, whose husband, Himmler's SS liaison man at Führer headquarters, would ultimately be executed for desertion in Berlin, left the area with several trunks full of Eva Braun's possessions, including bundles of intimate love letters from Hitler. She was driven to Schloss Fischhorn, headquarters of her brother-in-law Waldemar Fegelein's SS Florian Geier Cavalry Division. This important Ava Brown material being secreted in the castle cellars. It has never been seen again. SS General Schaub set to work destroying Hitler's papers and effects at the ruined Berghof. All of the important material had long since been stored in the bomb-proof tunnels, and Schaub and Dozer now collected it and hauled it out into a bonfire on the Berghof terrace. Among the huge amounts of correspondence burned was a shoebox full of letters from Hitler's half-niece, Gailey Raubel, who many have suspected was Hitler's girlfriend in the 1930s until she shot herself inside his Munich apartment. There were also piles of architectural plans and all manner of secret files, documents and letters. Albert Bormann, Martin Bormann's estranged brother was evacuated from the Führer bunker to the Obersalzberg. His heavily pregnant wife actually gave birth shortly after the RAF raid. On the 29th of April, a radio broadcast from Berlin announced that Hitler would never leave the city. It appeared that Hitler's end was indeed imminent, as the Red Army was by now less than a kilometre from the bunker. The future for Hitler's loyal staff living in the ruins atop the Obersalzberg appeared forlorn. Nonetheless, Albert Bormann addressed the SS garrison, telling them, quote, Do not lose courage, it is not the end. end quote. But it obviously was. Hitler's death on the 30th of April 1945 wasn't actually announced to the world until the 1st of May, in an address by new German leader Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz via Radio Hamburg. Immediately on receipt of this news, complete chaos broke out in both Berchtesgaden and Obersalzberg. Local civilians raided the Gutshof, Martin Bormann's special farm, stripping it of all the food supplies and the livestock. They broke into the Nazi guesthouses and Albert Speer's large house and stole everything they could, including all the furniture. The huge Platterhof Hotel was thoroughly looted. People even penetrated some of the bunker complex and stole without restraint. The SS guards did nothing to stop the looting, unwilling perhaps to enforce the rules of a regime clearly almost over, and probably more interested now in their own survival. The husband and wife administrators of the Berghof cleared out the rubble in the kitchens and then stripped it of all appliances and movable goods, making off in a truck never to be seen again. One of Ava Brown's dogs, a Scottish terrier named Nagus, which she had left behind at the Berghof in the company of the staff, was abandoned to its fate. The dog was loathed by everyone as it was bad-tempered and snappy. Now its pampered existence had come to an abrupt end. It was just another unwanted wartime stray wandering among the ruins looking for food. Albert Bormann had already made arrangements before the chaos broke out for his family and some of Hitler's closest staff, including the secretaries, to move into a guarded hotel, the Pension Posthof, at Hintersee near Berchtesgaden. 
This building had been used for many years as accommodation for Hitler's household and adjutancy staff and was well stocked with food and drink. The U.S. Army was beginning to close in on the Berchtesgaden area, and some of Hitler's staff went to Hintersee, but Hitler's secretaries for the time being continued living in Hitler's bunker beneath the Berghof ruins. In the meantime, the Kripo, the criminal police detachment on the Obersalzberg, made arrangements to destroy these bunker rooms using grenades. Hitler's valuable art collection was also stored there, but after the intervention of Albert Bormann, it was decided to save this collection and remove it from the Obersalzberg. In the meantime, the Kripo wrecked the bunkers, smashing up Ava Brown's valuable porcelain collection and dragging her clothes, hats, shoes and other articles outside and burning them, the same being done with Hitler's uniforms and clothing. Hitler and Ava Brown's photograph and film albums were also largely burned. They were going to destroy the valuable silverware as well, but this and Hitler's art collection and tapestries were eventually taken away on an SS truck shortly before the arrival of Allied troops. They were taken to Altelsee near Salzburg and hidden in a salt mine and later recovered by the US Army. When news arrived that US troops had reached Kemsee, which is not very far from Berchtesgaden, the SS guards decided to leave. Before departing, they set fire to the bomb ruins of the Berghof in an attempt to leave nothing for the enemy, and in trucks drove off, apparently in an attempt to rejoin the war around Linz in Austria. Schaub and Albert Bormann later decamped to the Pension Post, along with Hitler's dentist, Dr. Hugo Blaschke. They were making preparations to flee when Hitler's secretaries joined them. Also at the hotel were the wife of Hitler's naval adjutant, Admiral von Puttkammer, plus her children and mother, Grand Admiral Dernitz's wife and her sister, and various other relations of the once all-powerful Third Reich elite. Food soon became scarce, and then the US Army captured Berchtesgaden. They ordered the Pension Post evacuated to house US troops, and the strange gang of leaders and their families ended up crammed into a small annex. US troops looted the whole area and its buildings very thoroughly for souvenirs, and former foreign force labourers were frequently violent with the Nazi refugees and locals. The US Army's counter-intelligence corps now began hunting down and arresting all those associated with Hitler, and the two secretaries were eventually taken into custody in May 1945 as the CIC searched for Albert Bormann. Bormann was gone. He changed his surname to Rott and worked for years as a farm labourer until eventually unmasked and arrested in April 1949. He was given six months hard labour and lived until 1989, dying in Munich. Julius Schaub likewise changed his name but was actually picked up soon after the Americans arrived and held in custody until 1949. He died in Munich in 1967. Hitler's secretary Christa Schroeder was arrested on the 22nd of May 1945 by CIC agents who arrived at the Pension Post looking for Albert Bormann. She was held until May 1948 and later wrote a book about her time with Hitler. She worked post-war as a secretary and died in Munich in 1984, aged 76. Hitler's other secretary, Johanna Wolf, was arrested the day after Schroeder in Bad Tulz in Bavaria on the 23rd of May and held also until 1948. She also died in Munich in 1985 at the age of 85. Incredibly, one of Hitler's Führerbunker personnel, who had been with the Führer to the end in Berlin, actually made it out of encircled Berlin. That was Hitler's chief driver, Erich Kempke, he made it all the way to Hintersee, near to Berchtesgaden, where he was arrested by US troops on the 18th of June 1945. He would of course be one of the key witnesses for the British and Americans looking into what actually happened to Hitler and Eva Braun in Berlin, as most of the other important witnesses had been captured by the Soviets and held for 10 years. Kemke also wrote a book about his experiences, originally titled I Cremated Adolf Hitler. 
He was released from U.S. captivity on the 9th of October 1947 and died in January 1975 in Freiburg am Neckar, age 64. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.